Well, hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are gonna be getting into a topic that I get a lot of questions about, and that is what hair loss treatments actually work. As a dermatologist, I am gonna walk you through minoxidil, finasteride, and PRP, otherwise known as platelet-rich plasma. We're gonna be talking about how these work, their pros and cons, so you can leave this video having some sense of what you might expect. But before we get into all of that, I wanna take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, iRestore, makers of the iRestore Elite, an FDA-cleared clinical-grade red light therapy device that y'all already know I've personally been using for over two years now and recommending widely. Without a doubt, hair loss is very distressing to go through. There are many different types of hair loss. First and foremost, it's very important that you know what type of hair loss you are dealing with so that you can pursue the most logical evidence-based treatments. Not all hair loss types are created equal, so getting an accurate diagnosis from a board-certified dermatologist will set you up on the path to being able to actually choose treatments that are ideal for your hair loss type and ultimately preserve your hair long-term. Hair loss is best intervened on early. The sooner you start, the better the long-term outlook will be for your hair growth goals. I personally, several years ago, developed some hair shedding after running a marathon. I know firsthand how like very distressing that is to have a lot more hair shedding. It's called telogen effluvium. And at the time I became very interested in at-home low-level laser therapy. Low-level laser therapy, otherwise known as photobiomodulation, is a technology where red and near-infrared wavelengths of light when penetrating the scalp do three things. Decrease inflammation, which can contribute to hair loss. Also improve circulation in the scalp, allowing for better delivery of growth factors to the hair follicle, which is key for healthy hair growth. And they also help kickstart the metabolism of hair follicle cells, allowing for reawakening of dormant hair follicles and hair regrowth. So it's an evidence-based treatment. And the thing that drew me to it the most is that it's something that you can do in the privacy of your own home, at your leisure, you can multitask while doing it. There are a lot of good devices on the market. Not all devices are created equal. So why do I choose iRestore devices? Well, their devices are some of the most comprehensive and well-powered, well-constructed, well-engineered devices on the market. And importantly, they're actually backed by clinical studies on real patients. So specifically, the iRestore Elite, which is the device that I started using two years ago and I'm currently still using, it's the most powerful LED hair device on the market. It has 250 milliwatts of total power outage. That's comparable to in-clinic laser treatments. It uses 500 medical grade diodes. That's 300 lasers and 200 LEDs. So it really gives you broad coverage across the entire scalp and really targeted intensity to stimulate hair follicles. It's FDA cleared, heavily vetted for safety, and it's clinically proven. In fact, one study showed a 43% increase in total hair count in just four months. And in contrast to many other devices on the market, the Elite device is really constructed to allow for very comprehensive scalp coverage, getting good coverage of the sides of the scalp and the back of the scalp. I personally love that it's hands-free. It's really easy to do at home and multitask, like while you're doing dishes or something. I actually often forget it's even on my head because it's very comfortable, light. Um, you don't even remember that it's up there. It's non-invasive, doesn't involve any medications, and it's as easy as 12 minutes a day. That's it. To be honest with you, many people actually start seeing improvement in as little as three months. And you all probably already know this, but hair growth does not happen overnight. We're talking thicker, fuller, healthier looking hair. And for me, it's been an amazing long-term tool. It's one that's easy to fit into your routine and you can feel comfortable doing at home. Best of all, low-level laser therapy with iRestore Elite, not only can it be done in the privacy of your own home, but it can be paired with other treatments, including all of the treatments we're gonna be talking about in today's video. And when it comes to hair loss, a multimodal approach using a couple of different therapies targeting the underlying root causes of your hair loss disorder, that is really a game changer for turning a corner in your hair growth goals. So in other words, it can help to 
get you potentially better results from the therapies that you are currently using. Many of you have already told me how much you love it and that you are seeing results, which is great. But some of you have been a little on the fence because it is an upfront investment. But right now, you guys, they have an early Black Friday sale going on. Check the description box. I will also have it as a pinned comment. Check out the latest deal they have because they have some amazing savings going on right now. So now would be a great time to kickstart your hair health goals and get started with low-level laser therapy. But those of you who are already using the device, let me know what has your experience been with it? What kinds of results are you seeing? I've already heard so many great uh, testimonials from you guys over the years about how this has just completely helped you turn a corner and your hair is fuller, thicker, and you're really getting your confidence back, which makes me really happy to hear. Getting into the therapies, let's start with minoxidil. You've probably heard of minoxidil or Rogaine. This is a medication that really works likely by increasing blood flow to the follicle. Ultimately, it helps to prolong the growing phase of the hair cycle, which is also known as the antigen phase. Basically, what that means is that it helps hair stay in the growing phase of the hair cycle longer. There are two main ways in which minoxidil can be used for hair. You can apply it to your scalp in either a liquid or a foam, or you can take a once a day tablet that is prescribed by your doctor. Now, the topical form is great because there is a much lower risk of any potential adverse effects to your total body health because you're just applying it locally. Now, it has to be used every single day and that can be a lot to keep up with. Some people don't like applying it, they forget, it's hard to maybe remember, and it can cause some scalp irritation, which for some people is just unbearable. Also, very important, if you have pets at home, the topical minoxidil, if they get a hold of it, it is very toxic to them, can have serious adverse effects. Topical minoxidil can rub off, for example, on your pillowcase, and if your pet sleeps there, they might be exposed to harmful levels of it. Also, if they rummage through the trash can and come in contact with an applicator or a tissue that you were using to wipe off some residue, well, it could be too much, especially for cats. That's another thing to factor in when talking about topical minoxidil. Oral minoxidil, the tablet form, on the other hand, has become over the years increasingly popular as an effective treatment for hair loss. Because it doesn't require daily scalp application, it's a little bit easier to keep up with just taking a tablet every single day. But it does carry some potential unwanted side effects such as fluid retention, lower leg swelling. It can make you a little dizzy if you go from lying down to standing up too quickly. And unfortunately, it can cause, well, unwanted hair growth like on your face or body. Very rarely, it can cause heart-related complications such as fluid around the heart that's known as pericardial infusion. But in contrast to the topical form, it's a lot less likely that your pet will be exposed to your oral minoxidil intake as opposed to coming in contact with topical minoxidil residue. Unless you just accidentally spill a bunch of minoxidil tablets on the floor, don't pick them up, and your pet accidentally ingests them. Otherwise, you see what I'm saying here? It's a, it's a lot lower risk for the pet if you're taking a pill, but more potential side effects for you. That's why it's only prescribed by a doctor, so something you need to clarify if it is right for you. As far as how they differ, not everyone responds to topical minoxidil. Some people get better results with oral minoxidil. Some people combine them. Regardless of if it's topical or oral, you do still need to take it in order to maintain the results. In other words, it doesn't cure the hair loss. It really just helps keep hair follicles in the growing phase. It's best if started early, but once you stop it, the hairs that it has put into the growing phase, well, that impetus will be removed and they will shed and the hair loss process will ensue. Then you have finasteride. It can be taken by mouth or applied topically to the scalp. Finasteride is used to treat a type of hair loss called androgenetic alopecia. The potent androgen hormone dihydrotestosterone causes the hair follicle to miniaturize and turn into a vellus baby hair. Finasteride is a DHT blocker, so it prevents that hair follicle shrinkage from DHT. Oral finasteride, the one you take by mouth, is the most well studied and what is actually FDA approved for male pattern hair loss or androgenetic alopecia in men. Oral finasteride is the most well studied because it's absorbed through the body. There are some potential adverse effects that you might encounter, but it's going to be the most robust at lowering the DHT levels in comparison to topical. Possible side effects include lower libido, sexual dysfunction, mood changes, reduced ejaculatory volume, and there's also association with a higher grade of prostate cancer diagnosis. But these side effects are pretty rare. 
Topical finasteride, on the other hand, is designed to minimize potential systemic side effects. It's just something that you apply to locally to the scalp. While there are some studies that suggest it can be helpful, they're limited and it's not an established go-to cleared FDA approved treatment for hair loss. And there are still concerns that topical application of finasteride can get you some systemic bodily absorption. There may be potential adverse effects as well. Something to keep in mind, topical finasteride has gained popularity as it is distributed through a variety of direct to consumer uh, avenues for hair loss, but it is not a go-to standardized treatment for androgenetic alopecia. And finasteride cannot be given to women of childbearing potential or who are you know, contemplating pregnancy because of the potential for birth defects, though it's not off the table for women in general. Overall, both oral and topical finasteride, they can work, but oral finasteride tends to give the strongest, most predictable and robust results. But for patients who are very concerned about potential systemic side effects, topicals may be an option discussed with your treating healthcare provider. All right, now let's talk about PRP, platelet-rich plasma. This is an in-clinic procedure where they drop a small sample of your blood. They spin that blood sample down in a centrifuge and isolate a growth factor rich fraction from it. And then they inject it into your scalp. The growth factors in that concentrated plasma are thought to stimulate hair follicles and reawaken dormant follicles, ultimately allowing for better hair growth. PRP appeals to people because it's more natural, I guess you would say, and that you're not exposing yourself to any drug, just your own body's platelet rich plasma. Some people's hair loss actually gets worse. Some people's hair does not respond to it. And some people do get results. But unfortunately, PRP, it's not the most standardized protocol. There can be variations in how one provider does it from another, which could impact results that you get. Also, the success is likely influenced by say your overall background health. Older adults or adults in poor health may not get the best results, right? Because they're just taking from that fraction of their own body. If your PRP is not super robust and rich in growth factors, like maybe when you were 10 or 15 years younger, well, you might not get the best results. And importantly, PRP injections are really expensive and you have to keep doing them in order to maintain results. And to what extent they are superior to just putting topical minoxidil on your head every night, I don't really think we have a good argument in favor of one over the other. It's more a matter of personal preference, but the PRP is gonna be a lot more expensive. And like minoxidil, you have to keep using it in order to maintain those results. But that's the case with all of these. Minoxidil, finasteride, PRP, and at-home low-level laser therapy. They need to be done consistently in order to maintain results. Then there's low-level laser therapy. Really no side effects other than some scalp tingling, maybe some minor scalp irritation. It's an upfront investment, but it's a one-time purchase. And with iRestore, they actually offer a money-back guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied after a year, you can get a refund. But the best results often come from combining different treatments, which are gonna target slightly different arms of the hair loss process. And importantly, they all pretty much need to be continued in order to maintain results. So to wrap it up, this isn't a one size fits all approach when it comes to hair loss. Knowing what type of hair loss you have is key before you can decide if any one of these treatments is gonna be right for you. But the good news is we have several evidence-based, science-backed treatment interventions that can get you improvement in thickness, density, regrowth, slow down the shedding process. Often the best results come from using two or more therapies under the guidance of a dermatologist. If you're looking for a powerful non-drug option, the iRestore Elite device, I highly, highly recommend. Yes, it is an upfront investment, but it pays off dividends in the long run. Certainly has made a huge difference for me personally, and it's something I really have come to enjoy using in my daily routine. Make sure to check the description box for the latest Black Friday deal, because I know they are running an amazing savings deal right now that you don't want to miss out on. Big thank you to iRestore for sponsoring today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.